Who's the winner of the tournament? I'll go with France. Of course you will. Doesn't... I think we are... Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite German city? I'm saying Dusseldorf. You're going to Dusseldorf? Oh, that's that's the stag, dude. We've still got the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> and what stays in that group chat? <laughs> stays in that group chat. <laughs> England's route to a final. You're already in the final. Right. Do you like the jumper? Oh, this is Chris. <laughs> what have we here? <laughs> We've <laughs> stick to football <laughs> and a happy <laughs> new year. Yes, this is. Why am I singing that now? I know. Oh, this is Christmas. It's a nice, like, um, nice I like that. these teas, is this? Well, there we're here. <laughs> Roy's getting no presents. <laughs> <laughs> no one's getting For presents. another year. <laughs> <laughs> is that true, that, by the way, the presents? Yes, it is. Why are you, why, like, why are you Roy, I feel a bit sad about it. it. What's sad about Christmas you for wake children? Up on Christmas Day, and you don't have that little bit of moment. He's under I look at my wife and children. I think that's the best present a man can get. Oh, oh it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> oh, you got that now. It's a beautiful thing. You touch me deep. Well, this is the week after, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gary, so I was going home early from the Christmas dues. Remember that? No, I didn't. Oh, you did. Oh my God! Everyone got to the end. Right, I was there to the end. Right, you might have heard this story. That night when you got, I was there. Right, I was Steve the Bruce end. taught me, you never, you never leave, leave anyone. I'm yeah. Ferguson told yeah. us on the Tudor, yeah. you never yeah. leave anybody. <laughs> What's that? I never left till the end. What, what the fuck yeah. do? Because, you know, when you were drinking, Gary yeah, was like... Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. He's a tipper. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I'm not a tipper. <laughs> I'm not a tipper. You see me in the World Cup. Stayed after you lot. No. Stayed after you like the World Cup in Qatar at the ITV, do you remember? Yeah, I remember that, yeah. <laughs> right. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Oh, of course you can. Did you, did you get the jumper in? Cheeky Nandos. Thank you. Cheeky Nandos. <laughs> you can't just have a che Nando. I love Cheeky Nandos. Cheeky Nandos. Nandos. <laughs> <laughs> Were you having a Nandos? No, yeah. will, you be no. In, will you be in, will you be in the Euros, Euros this summer or not? No, but I've actually, I think uh, James wants to go and watch a couple of games, so I'm just right. actually trying to sort out, just go to oh, a The Euros games. seems like 10 years away. I know it's not, know. it's coming. It's coming, <laughs> it's coming fast, baby. This week on Stick to Football, we're going to be doing a Euro 24 draw special brought to you by EA Sports FC 24 on PlayStation 5. And we're going to be discussing all things England. Can England do it this time? Can they finally get over the line under Gareth Southgate? The other home nations and who is going to win the tournament? Right, it's Christmas time, but, <laughs> but the Euro draw was last week and we'll all be there next summer. Feels like a long way away, but what initially stands out and excites you about the draw? Um, I like I like um, Group B because I've got a lot of Albanian mates, <laughs> and we know that Spain, Italy, Croatia, when they get into tournament, they they do stuff. They get there. They yeah. get to finals. Turn up, yeah. And I think that Albania, and it's because they got um, Silvino, who used to be Arsenal's left back, managing. Mm. So I think that that group has got a lot of excitement about it. It, it it feels like almost like a Champions League now. You know, you get really excited for the knockout games. Mm. And I go back, obviously, I'm, I'm a user older than me, but remember when the Euros used to just be eight teams or like it went 16. to sort of 16. Yeah. And I just think that, I always think that was the best football tournament anywhere the Euros then. So it almost feels like, yeah, but I can, you know, it's the Euros, it'll be good, but it just feels like the knockout stage is when it'll really come alive. Germany, Germany are not even doing well at the minute. <clears throat> Not doing great, but like, are they going to? Are you writing them off? I feel like Ryder's just written them off. I feel like I'm writing Germany off. No, it's last draw. Who is who is in a good place? Who's in a good place at the moment? Not England, oh, England. Yeah. We are. Who do you think can stop England winning that? France. France. That, 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 but that's it. Spain. Spain. I, I think England beat Spain. You think? So? You think? Yeah. I think only Portugal and yeah. France. Yeah. Maybe. England's route to a final could potentially take on Italy, France in the semi, and Germany, Portugal, or Spain in the final. You're already in the final. Take that away! Jesus Christ, they've won it. No, it's the um, final. Listen, it, you know something, it's not just because I obviously... Well, be careful of the group stuff. You know this idea that England is going to course through that group? No, we should, we should you know what? They should not get over it, obviously. Yes. But, 
you want. No, no, no. We've got we've got tournament experience now. That's the thing. We could we should be getting through that group, no problem. Of course, right. But so and we and we know how to get through the like Denmark. Denmark and Omogs. I, I agree with you. I think we have got tournament experience. Mm. Do you think there is an element? I, I, I don't know if this does exist. I'm not sure. I'm asking the question. Do you think there's tournament scars from this group? As in. Oh, we should have done it in 2018 in Russia. We had Croatia in the mm -hmm. semi-final. Mm -hmm. We got to the final against Italy. Italy at Wembley. Oh, my God, we were there. Italy's we were 1-0 up. Yeah. And then in the last tournament, they played really well. Missed, obviously, Harry missed the penalty, yeah. which is, but they played well against France and were probably the better team in performance terms. Do you think there's an element of them thinking tournament experience, we're on our way to win it? Or do you think there's an element of, oh, we're fucking never going to do this. We have, we've had our best chances already. Um, I, think, I think Italy was a massive chance for us at home with the way we were playing. Didn't get that done, but... I, I think that um, the way, what we've got going forward, obviously defensively, we're going to have to sort out what we're going to do about the center halves and how we're going to play, but we have got more than enough to take from those experiences, I think, to, 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 to push through. Yeah, they should have belief. I think that's, that's what it comes, I think, you know. They, certainly, think, shouldn't, you think they certainly shouldn't be lacking any belief no. that they can go and win this. We need I, to get a couple of center halves through. That, to, um, to, to, you need stones fit. Think, stones, yeah. get, obviously, he has a lot of injury problems, but I actually think the feeling will be, it's, it's, it's and, and I think with Bellingham sort of 18 months on from the World Cup, you're going into it with arguably the best player in the world right now. Who knows what we like in the summer, but you, you know, you, you know, France have got Mbappe. <coughs> yes. And we've, we've got sort of Kane as one, but Bellingham, you look at him thinking, when you think of the, the teams that have won trophies and, you know, at international level, there's always that sort of one player who feels like he's, he's the best player in the world or certainly there about. It just feels like, Bellingham's that good a player, you can feel like he's going to get hold of a tournament and just get England oh, they're in a across the place. line. And you look at the lads who've had a few moves, obviously Maguire's back in the team, the mm. spine of the team, Bellingham's world class, obviously. Rice has got his big move, yeah. he seems obviously doing well at Arsenal. Mm. Kane's had his move, it's almost freshened him up. I, I think England are in a great place. I, I know a lot can happen the next few months, mm. injuries of course, you can say that for any of the teams, but... Uh, there shouldn't be any sort of I, lack I of belief. Think, I think this is England's best chance because I think we've got the two best players in the team. We've got Bellingham, mm. there's just almost one end of his, of his career, Harry Kane's at the other. Yeah. And I just think in another two years, where would Harry Kane be in terms of like the World Cup? Would yeah. he still be seen as the, you know, one of the best strikers mm. in the world? He would be what? Would he be then 33 or mm. something? I just feel as if it's, it's, it's time now. Now, 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 or, now or never? I think it I might think so. be because of Kane, because mm. I think Kane's that good. You, you need, obviously, four or five, maybe or three or four world-class players, and I think England probably do have that. And I just think if Kane just wasn't the same in two years' time, that's a big... But the danger is we're talking about here, and we know what football is not that simple. You look at the group, you call yeah. it. They're in a great place. Mm. These all yeah. players are in their primes, and Bellingham, they've got world-class. So you, then you have this... As if it's bound to happen. This mm. this is bound to peak for us yeah. in the summer. You go, no, it doesn't work out that way. A little bit of luck, don't you? Yeah, a little bit of luck, of course. But they certainly have players available to certainly be a huge yeah. threat for this tournament. It's the, it's the most positive, though. I mean, in the past, when you've talked before a tournament, we've all thought we could potentially win. You've always been sort of like... Oh, here like, they go again, yeah. Yeah, but I think there's, 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 yeah, that's, that's the speak. most positive I've ever I heard think you so, speak yeah. about England winning a tournament, yeah. potentially. Yeah, I think so. I just think the players have available if they're fit come the summer. Two to three of the players have had big moves. And uh, they look like they're in a good place. And the group, yeah, they should get out of it. But obviously, again, obviously it's not as simple as that with the way you look at it on paper. But the players they have available, Garrett must be. Yeah. The, the attacking players, obviously you want one or two of your players to fit. Stones, Maguire's back in the team, yeah. A lot of pluses, and definitely, yeah, yeah they have a great chance. This special UEFA Euro 2024 draw episode of Stick to Football is brought to you by EA Sports FC 24 on PlayStation 5. With the draw now complete and the finals coming next year, EA Sports FC24 are celebrating this moment with a very special offer this Christmas, where you can play FC24 now and get a special UEFA Euro 2024 item in the game for your ultimate team, including Jack Grealish and Virgil van Dijk. The FC24 holiday offer will harness all the energy and excitement for UEFA Euro 2024, so play EA Sports FC24 on PlayStation 5 now and get ready for when the tournament comes to FC24 next year. Thanks again to FC24 on PlayStation 5 for sponsoring this episode of Stick to Football. Let's just look at the, the top part of the pitch, which is, to be fair, absolutely, we're rich in that place. But 
You can't see past Saka on the right, can you, playing no. on the right? You can't see past Kane. You can't see past Declan Rice. You can't see past Bellingham. They're all four going to play, you would say, if they're fit and all's well. Those other two positions, where are you on the left? You've got Rashford. You've got Foden. You've back. got Grealish. I, I was going to mention, you've got Raheem Sterling at this moment in time. Gareth doesn't normally about turn, does he, when he's made a decision? Mm. And we're all, he's done it before where we've sat there and said, why has he not got him in? And then yeah. he's just not brought him back. Why? What's the, what, what's the, I don't know. I, I don't know myself. But no, I, but sometimes I, you usually get, people get feedback like, from Gareth. Did he miss a couple of games? Did he miss, did he pull out of a couple of games last year? Or was, it, was, was there a reason for it? Something used to be Gareth. It's not just about yeah. football. It's usually about something else. That's, That's my I point. Think, I because football-wise, he's playing well. Yeah. Surely he's got enough credit in the bank with Gareth. Where he's, played for England. Yeah. he's not played many well, bad games. Well, the last tournament he played him, didn't he? Yeah. So you'd think that even if that was the case, you surely you're going to understand from Gareth's point of view, like, you know what, he's an experienced player, he's never let me down. He just wants to focus on the Chelsea move. Massive move. You know, he's starting to start to see some green shoots with him at Chelsea, but why would he hold that against him? I, I'm finding find, yeah, it's baffling. Would, yeah, would, 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 you, would you start Raheem over Rashford, Foden and Grealish? Would you? Yeah. You yeah, would? With the experience and the way he's playing, absolutely. Would you? Yeah. I, I think that player, I, I rule Grealish out of playing just because the fact of when you've got Harry Kane, he's always coming towards the ball. So I think these two in these positions, in the wide position, have got to be players who penetrate. And I think Grealish is, is different. I'm not saying he, he couldn't play some of the games. So for me, it's either be a Rashford or a Sterling because of, of that point. So Saka's making runs, making runs. Harry Kane's going to... So it's a centre-forward goal scorer. You can play it off yeah. somebody who runs behind, basically. I'd one pace in the wide areas because of you, you need the team's built yeah. around Harry Kane in some way. So you need to sort of supplement him. And that's why I'd, I'd be looking at sort of Rashford or a Sterling. Someone who could come sort of out the pack who's not there yet that's is it. probably an Anthony Gordon yeah. who yes. he has got blistering okay. pace. Yeah. Uh, now, whether he wants to bring someone in who's not really been in the squad before... Yeah, back but you do need that surprise, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's the one on, on that left position where... He tracks he, back as well, doesn't he? He, know, he knows back. the position mm. with Eddie yeah. Howe as I'm going back. Oh, he tracks back. <laughs> <laughs> that's his job. That's his job. <laughs> no, but like, the good shout. So who are you picking on the left? You're going Raheem? I'd probably go with Raheem. Depending on how Anthony Gordon continues yeah. to go, but I'm picking Are you picking on the left? Yeah, I wouldn't be against Sterling going in there. Yeah. Absolutely not. I, I think Gareth will, will pick Rashford. Uh, I think he's got that spot at the I, minute. I'll go back to something I said in the last tournament. I think for England not to pick Phil Ford in the starting eleven is a crime. Yeah, that's true. It's yeah. a crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think to have a player of that talent and ability... Where? No. where? So I, I'm putting him on the left because Pep sometimes plays him there. I think he can put those balls in for Kane with his left foot. Mm. I'm not saying it's his best position, but I just think... I I'd have Ford in there. I, if you were talking okay. about Rashford, and that, and it's, I wouldn't be disappointed if you see Sterling in there, don't get me wrong. Okay. But again, you yeah, can't, yeah, it's hard to leave yeah. Ford in order. Okay. Yeah, so you would yeah, play yeah, Ford with Ford. Bellingham and Rice in midfield, would you? I think you? so, yeah. He could do that. I think you Where would play Trent, that. Would Trent not playing there? I, I was thinking about this, and I, I said this the other day, because I think the one area where England are weak, we're talking about being on the left really strong and maybe at right back really strong. I think where we're really weak is almost central midfield in that. Jordan Henderson's a lot older now. He's playing in Saudi Arabia. Calvin Phillips is not playing. There's not that many, I would say, top central midfield players. So you've got Declan Rice, who I absolutely love. I think he's as good as anyone in that role. I actually think you could look at Trent in that position. That's where he plays for England. Staying there or going back out to right wing back or no, right? No, no, no. Just no, staying there. there. Just Kyle Walker's yeah. right back. Yeah. Just almost sort of sit along, maybe a little bit higher than yeah. Declan Rice and Bellingham's doing his thing. But you've just got Trent there just making passes, mm. you know, and controlling the game from there. I just mm. think, is, as you say with Foden, I think Trent's ability on the ball is that good that you're almost, not, not have to find a, a position for him, but it's not really his true position. I think that's where he will eventually go to mm. in midfield. But I think I'd go with Trent because it doesn't feel like there's too many other options anyway. I'd worry about him though in the, against the France or a Spain or... But when they in terms of the defending or on yeah, the ball? The, the, not on knowledge, the ball, he's brilliant knowledge. on the ball. Just his knowledge is his yeah, know, his know how in there. You know what I mean? So who would you play? And I, 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 to be honest with you, I'm struggling with it a little bit myself because I think that is the one. Yeah, we ain't got. When that is the one position, that midfield position that I think, if we go with Declan Rice and Bellingham as a two, it becomes we're too no, we're too open. Can't. We can't. Yeah, no. So we do need someone in there yeah, yeah. who's going to. To be fair, the other one's Colin, Connor Gallagher, who's obviously played, but he's he's a runner. He's a. No, I don't think he's, he's good enough. Anyway. No, I don't think he's good enough. But who goes in there? It's either it's either got to be Foden on, against a team like, say, for, let's say we think Foden can play in there, couldn't he? Yeah, but can he against the top teams when we're looking to? Do you just go and play? I mean, do you, do you literally just go and say, right, Declan, you're going to sit there, mm. Bellingham and Foden, and then you've got obviously your front three, which whoever that is on that left hand side. That's that's pretty impressive. That 
like, Foden, Bellingham in front of Rice. Yeah, That's yeah. what the fans would want, I think. And then maybe Rashford or Grealish or Sterling on the left. Well, depending. Not bad options. No, 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 whatever. No. If you could playing, argue for all these yeah. different players. Yeah. And dip, if Rashford. Foden's playing in the, in the middle, then I would definitely have Sterling on the left, depending on Rashford's form now. And like we say with Anthony Gordon, Anthony Gordon, if he carries on doing what he's doing, he probably should get a, a shout. Mm. If England could take one player out of any other team that you would then think could take them from being sort of could win it to they'll win it, what position would that be and who would that player be? Centre back. Probably a centre back. I think uh, centre back. I'd take Saliba. Hmm. I'd take Saliba. You know, he's, he's, he's on the bench for France for crying out loud. It's unbelievable what they've got. They're so stacked. I'd take Saliba. I still have issues with the goalkeeper, I do. I can't check that off for England. Pick for I think he's been pretty good for England. I know he has, Gary. I know, but in terms of just the last bit, I just... Seems like everybody's waiting for everybody's waiting for the, the, the mistake. Or the Who would you bring in for him from the European sort of... Uh, Courtois? Probably. Maybe. Yeah, I just, yeah. That's, my, that's my question mark. I think the question mark with this team is the... The goalkeeper and the centre back position is just it, I I, I, look. I, to be fair, you know my type of goalkeepers. I like a strong six foot three goalkeeper, sturdy, strong, reliable. Doesn't laugh. Doesn't sort of mess around. <laughs> no, seriously, I, honestly, just it literally is like just, a monster, just uh, imposing. So I have my issues with Pickford. However, what I would say is, I've watched him now in the last three tournaments. I'm struggling to find yeah, yeah. where he's let England down in yeah, six, yeah, seven yeah, years. Yeah. And I can't, honestly, I'd be critical if I thought I could. Yeah. He has absolutely been so consistent he's and reliable. He's still on international level. There's no getting away so, from that. Yeah. That's why I, to be fair, don't name him because I think he actually, to be fair, has stepped up. Was it the French England. goal? Could he have saved this? Was this... He, there was maybe, oh, there's always a goal, isn't there? But I think just generally, I think he stepped up for England and delivered. I think yeah. he's consistent. Mm -hmm. And this idea that Ramsdale and Pope would come no. in and take him over, no, 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 no forget no, that. No, no. I know Pope's out injured for a bit, but that, that's, that's gone now. That. that question of Ramsdale's going to come up and do this and he Dean Henderson, he's going to chat. No, no, forget it. He's I get that. He's, I, yeah. I, I, I think centre back's the one position where you're still looking, you think, oh, if Stones wasn't fit, Harry Maguire's, you know, confidence wise, you know, is he playing enough football? Then you go, who would play alongside him, really? I, I, I've never... I've, I mean, Gareth tried the five at the back with, so let's say, Kyle Walker with uh, Stones and Maguire as a three, with Trent then doing that sort of out to there and coming in like he does from sort of right wing back. And you've on the left, you've got, you've got obviously, uh, Shaw, um, who plays that left wing back role. And then it means you can have the two in midfield because you've got three centre backs behind him. You've got Kyle Walker's pace. What, I, so I, who are you leaving out of the... So you're losing, you're losing someone somewhere. No, no, what I'm saying to you is we haven't got that third man in midfield. We were all struggling with it a little bit. You just have Bellingham and Rice because you've got three centre-halves behind them and you've got Trent going in there. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So you, yeah, you've yeah. almost got that stability. I, I just wonder whether that, we haven't got that third midfielder and I do think we need Kyle's pace alongside Stones and Walker. And you just play tight anyway now for yeah. City and for England. So, so, just, what, about, so what about a Reese James coming I, in? I like Reese James a lot, but he's, he can't, keep, play fit. Football, he can't keep fit. He can't keep fit. Right. Yeah, but if he, yeah, but if, 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 if he was fit now, if he stayed fit and he's got... I like Rhys James. Rhys James. To me, he's the blend between Kyle Walker and yeah. Alexander-Arnold. So he's, he, he's got the delivery yeah. and he's got yeah. the strength. I think he's the best of the lot if he stayed fit, but he can't stay fit. I think, mm -hmm. you, you know, we think with Rams there, I and mean, it's not just my Arsenal connection, you probably think it is, but if he was playing regularly, he'd still be pushed, he'd be pushing for a place as well still, for me. I, I think it will be. I think that everything was happening with Raya. That, that's doing everything was happening. I think that's doing Pickford a disservice for how he's played for England. I do honestly. No, 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 but I'm just talking about being pushed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he would be. Well, he yeah, pushed, he's yeah, playing at a, a bigger club, mm. sort of he would be. higher stage, if you like, Champions League. What's happened with the Arsenal and the Raya situation is kind of like, it's kind of given him a, just like, mm. get on with it now, um, Pickford. I don't oh. think no one's challenging him. Yeah. I'd probably go for a Ruben Diaz or... Yeah. Saliba, as you said, is a good one. Van Dijk. Yeah. Van Dijk's Holland, doesn't he? Yeah. I think it's the one area if you were playing against England, you'd that's think, about more okay, than, that's yeah. maybe where we can get some joy. Yeah. What, what, I'd say Scotland have done really well, haven't they? Yeah. Yes. Steve they've Clark. done really well. Yeah, they started He's a camp. great coach, yeah, Steve yeah, Clark. Yeah, Brilliant yeah. coach. They've got Germany in the opening game. And that's a great game for him. Yeah. 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 Scotland get out of that group. I, I think when you look at how Scotland started their, their campaign with the five wins, I don't think that's, of course, you know what Germany are, are, are capable of, but... I think that Scotland can get get out of that group, you know. Swiss. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah. yeah. Hungry and yeah. bad, you know. I'm yeah, no, sure I'm, I saw a bit of hungry, but I just feel that Scotland, if they can clip back into that mindset, what they started, they can beat them. They mm -hmm. can do it. I think they could get out. The of that last group. Euros were poor, weren't they? Scotland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
they played, they've done well against us. Yeah, they've done okay against they, England, yeah, of course. But like, I think that that's what they need to tap into that because I just feel that they can do something in that group, especially the way Germany are playing. Oh, no, it's a, yeah, it's a tough What's group. happening with Ireland, Roy? With the Irish team, just generally? I think the real problem is lack of players playing at uh, top level. Too many players now for Ireland playing the Championship. Or certainly not how, at the how top do you, end of the How do you go mm. from Ronnie Whelan, John Aldridge, Paul McGrath, Steve Staunton playing for championship with his top four teams. You know, all these players, yourself, Dennis Irwin, I mean, I go on forever, couldn't I? Ray yeah. Houghton. Mm. That's the how same with Scotland. I know. How do you go on from this great batch of players that play for the top clubs in the country, not just like the Premier League clubs, top mm. clubs, yeah. and Scotland with Dalgleish or Sunis and yeah, that yeah. era of players, Hansen, you know, all those players that were unbelievable. They weren't just like in the Premier League, they were the best in the Premier League. What's happened That's to really... Scotland to Ireland, what's happened to these countries? Yeah. Has the Premier League destroyed them or have they destroyed you themselves? They have destroyed it, no, but it's been sad. It's been sad that there's not enough players now at Man United. There's always an Irish connection, Arsenal yeah. and Irish. Liverpool obviously had great connections and there's nobody. Quivine, there's always one or two obviously in the background. Quivine, obviously, the goalkeepers there. Yeah, there's just not enough Irish players playing week in, week out in the Premier League. So when you turn up and lads are up from the Championship, then you're playing a big international match. And these lads are playing week in, week out in the championship, then it's very, very difficult. Again, going back to my town, we always had really good players and, and we had our struggles, even with all the players you've just mentioned. Yeah, Duff and Keane and so Yeah, but, yeah but it was always a battle, you know, yeah. Ireland or you know, we actually don't qualify that many tournaments. It's difficult, even with the players you've mentioned. Sometimes you need a bit of luck, you need the one hope Ireland got over the next you can't just pin it on one player. It was obviously the, the kid Ferguson at Brighton. And Brighton, yeah. Yeah. You know, he's got to stay fit and play well, and even then. It's unfair then to put all the pressure on him to say, listen, you've got to try and get us over the line in international matches. Because it is hard. It's hard to win international football. We just spoke about the players earlier, but England, look at the English players, the options. You look yeah. where Ireland players are. They're all down, they're all, a lot of them are in the it, championship. England were going that way about probably 10 years ago, 12 years ago, where there was a dearth of talent playing at the top clubs in the Premier League, where City weren't having any players in there and Chelsea only mm -hmm. had one or two. All of a sudden, it's changed. The English academy system's changed. The players that are coming through have changed. The belief in English players have changed. Touch on Wales because they could qualify and go into Group D with Netherlands, Holland, Austria and France. Do we think we've seen the best of Wales in terms of obviously them players coming to the end? Bale, mm. Ramsey. Yeah. Uh, it goes to show, yeah. we talk about coaching all day long and we look at Wales' results since Bale stopped yeah. playing. Mm. And Bale before that for the last 10, 15 years, getting Wales out of trouble. Yeah. Goals, his assist. Obviously Ramsey, he had obviously some decent players around that. But they've come out of the pack now. And all of a sudden, whatever yeah. about your coaching you miss your top players. Mm -hmm. And Bale was that. So he's a big, huge loss to him. A couple of community questions. Who's, which player are you most gutted at missing out on the Euros? Obviously, some, a selection here of Isaac, Ferguson, Haaland, Ireland would be Erdegaard. Ireland. Yeah. Haaland. And Erdegaard. Yeah, the Norway, players, yeah. The calibre of those yeah. players. They should, they should Ferguson. Ferguson. Yeah, Ferguson, Ferguson as well. Yeah, Ferguson as well. You think about Norway, though, in the past. They were yeah. all sorts of, always yeah. in tournaments, had yeah. loads of players in the Premier League. They've now probably got the best player in the Premier League in Haaland, probably Odegaard's in the top sort of five or six when he's, he's on song. So Crazy. it just feels strange they're not yeah. there, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Favourite German city? Berlin oh. is unbelievable. Baden -Baden. I've never been. Baden-Baden. <laughs> the wags. Yeah. <laughs> Get the circus back in yeah. town. Oh, my but family Berlin's had a great awesome. time in Baden-Baden. Yeah, yeah. They go back every year. <laughs> I'm going Munich. I've got, yeah, I like Munich. I love Munich. I've never been to Berlin. I've never been Berlin's to Berlin. Really I've been beautiful. to Berlin. Yeah. Berlin's really it's got a big cool. rave scene on it. Yeah, no, and it's a nicer, cool vibe. Yeah. It's got a kind of... I'm saying Dusseldorf. you going Dusseldorf? <laughs> I'm going for the stag, dude. We've still got the group chat. <laughs> <laughs> and what stays in that group chat? Yeah. Stay in that group chat. <laughs> yeah. Berlin's got a vibe. It's a really cool vibe. I think people are going to really enjoy it. I can't wait to go. Yeah. I, love the, I love Berlin. We'll have a good time in Berlin, bro. Yeah, be don't be late. Yeah, don't yeah. be late. Don't be late, or else he'll uh, go yeah. to a freeze bath. <laughs> 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 right, what's your favourite Euros moment of all time? Probably. Oh. I'm going to go with Bam Basten. Bam, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the brilliant. great 88 winner. Go on, you have to do something else then. Everyone would say that. Gaza, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, Gaza, 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 Gaza oh, Scotland. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Gaza, Scotland. Amazing, oh, Gaza. Good celebration. Um, Dentist chair. Then it's fair celebration. <laughs> That's a tough one for me because I, I always thought I was going to make that score. I was devastated. Yeah. Every time I see 1996, it makes me want to fucking cry. <laughs> but like, you love um, a sad story. <laughs> <man. Yeah, laughs> but like, yeah, but look, then it's just, um, you know, God rest him, you know what I mean? The right of the death, I, you know, the, when you get that news, <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, I just love being around like Gaza and that. And yeah. obviously, you didn't see my type, my type friend at the time, but like that Gaza goal. Yeah. 
amazing goal. Roy Ferret, you're most well, Irish moment, maybe, but the big, there's a couple of big Irish moments. Yeah, come on, remind me. Jeez, I sort of be. 88, 88, 88. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Huge one. Yeah, yeah. 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 that was huge. For the country, yeah. huge lift for Ireland that time, honestly. The buzz, everyone needed a lift. Jack and the players at the time, obviously, I didn't get involved till after that, but 88. How old were you then, Roy? 88, obviously, 17. Wow. 17, yeah. Uh, brilliant. Oh, such a lift to the country that was when the team were doing well. Yeah. Huge. Final question. Mm. Who's the winner of the tournament? <sighs> Remember, this comes back to haunt. You can't change. You know something? Once I, you've I, said this, you can't you, change. You, you, have to, I, you, you know, France have to be the favourites. But I'm, you know what? I'm going to say England. I'm going to say England because we've been so close and I think this is probably the real last... Pro last Last go. At it. Are you saying Belgium? No chance. You're writing Belgium off. Not, yeah, no chance. Belgium. They've, they've nice. missed the boat. And I, think, yeah. I want to see England righty, and I, I, I swear, I so hope that they win it. But honestly, I just feel that somehow that know-how and that getting over the line follows you around a little bit. And I just don't know what the difference is this time. Could it be Bellingham? Maybe in that sense, the form he's in now. I just feel that France. The, somehow the know-how there, game management, the big moments. I just feel like you're just not going to be... You say well. Saliba's sub. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, the and, and squad's Mbappe, unbelievable Mbappe, France, Mbappe, Mbappe's a freak. I know that Kyle he is. does well against him, so... You but. know the thing is with, with Mbappe as well? You know the, the second goal he scored, the volley one? Yeah. In a World Cup final, right? For, to think, to, the way he, he executed that, it was like, you know it's something? It's unbelievable, isn't it? It's unbelievable because I'm, I swear to God, I'm doing everything to, to get that and get it on target. It fucking volleyed we, it. We've tired, haven't we? If you think about it, in that Euros final, we tired, We just fell off a little bit at yeah. the end. We just fall off a little no, bit. But look at it. it when, against he Italy. Grew, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. But but are you saying England's going to win it or France? I'm going to go with England. England. I'm going to go France. I'm going to go England. <laughs> Here we go. This is a big moment. I'll go with France. Of course you will. Yeah. And if, if Gareth doesn't... I think we all... Fucking Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> we all think England have got a good... We all think England have had great a great, chance. great, a great, great chance. chance. But we also think, also think England have had a great six years. But is this Gareth Southgate's last tournament, irrespective of what happens? Probably. I think yeah, so. Probably. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, probably is. Because I think... I think some of the criticism Gareth gets just from sort of, you know, the man on the street and all the people, mm. you know, the people I, I speak to, I think is so over the top. And I actually, not, not argue for him, he's got this reputation of being sort of really negative. And, but when you actually look at the stats, how many goals England score, yeah. you know, Bellingham, the, the players that we've got, I think it's a little bit harsh. But I do think if we don't go really close, as in, if we got to a final and we were unlucky or we got a bad refereeing decision in the semi-final and everyone felt it was unjust, people would say, well, OK. I think if, if we don't win it and people think he hasn't made the right substitution mm. at the right time or picked the right team, I think people will say, this team is good enough to win a tournament, so we need a manager who can take us and he's not. The, I, I just think the just, swell of opinion will be really against just, him, which I don't think is exactly yeah. right, but I think it will be. Just quickly, Gal, the France game, obviously the penalty miss. We were, we were dealing with France. Oh, yeah. We played well. You know, so if, if, I, if, I, yeah, if I'm England now, with Bellingham in the form years, we know Harry Kane's going to score his goals. You know, you go up against that France again, you say, that France will be wary of us. It depends 100%. on how... But who won that kit? Well, France won it. Did you just... <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> what, you, have to take, you have to take something from the fact that they are the they're probably going to be the favourites. But, we, but they're used to all that close. stuff. Their players are all playing for big clubs. I don't want, want more the French. What, you say they're not going to be afraid. They're not going to be afraid of us. Yeah, of course. But do you well. not think England will be afraid of them? Well, of course they will. Yeah. Be, but the fact is, you've got to go in there knowing that you know. What I mean, we've 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 given them a bloody. Well, that's a potential yeah. semi-final. Shut your mouth, no. right? <laughs> that's a potential <laughs> semi-final. We all look forward to. We'll all be there in the <coughs> minute, and we'll look forward. So to. If they get out of the group, England, of course. <laughs> <laughs> really well done. <laughs> well, we're six months away from all being in Germany, but that was an exciting introduction to what could happen in next year's Euros. Brought to you by EA Sports FC on PlayStation Five.